Hi there. In this video, we will go over some of the essential concepts for the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam. This is for SAA-C02 in case those who are wondering which version of the exam this concept are going to be dealing with. Now, one thing that all the viewers need to note that in terms of the importance of different domains, uh, domain one, which is design resilient architectures, the importance of that is almost 30% of the exam. Domain two, design high performing architectures is 28%. Design secure application architectures is 24 and the lowest is of course, design cost optimized architectures. So bearing that in mind, we will now go over the various essential concepts and how they will affect and appear in the different domains. Now we have 12 essential compute services or we can say essential concepts that we need to know for the solution architect associate exam. So starting with the most important of course compute, the remaining are just based on alphabetical ordering and not based on the relative importance. So we have compute, cost management, database, disaster recovery, high availability, management and governance, microservices and component decoupling, migration and data transfer, networking, connectivity and content delivery, security, serverless design and storage. Now these various concepts will come in different forms in the different exam questions for the various domains. Now the important essential concepts that we will go over for compute services are basically Elastic Compute Cloud which is falls under the category of instances or virtual machines in the compute services category. We have ECD, EC2 auto scaling, which also falls under instances. Then we have AWS Elastic Beanstalk, which is under the capacity management within the compute services category. Then we have Elastic Container Services, also known as ECS, which is within containers. We have Elastic Kubernetes Service, which is also known as EKS, also under containers and Fargate and Lambda, sorry, Fargate is under containers and Lambda under serverless. Now, while reading through compute services, um, they will appear in different forms in all the four domains. However, we will go through these services when we go through these essential concepts with a particular emphasis in understanding how they will appear for questions related to domain one, design resilient architectures and to design multi-tier architecture solutions and for domain two, how to design high performing architectures and specifically how to identify elastic and scalable compute solutions for a workload. Going on, we also have AWS cost management services overview and what is listed in the exam guide is that we need to cover AWS budgets, AWS cost explorer and AWS cost and usage report. Now, as mentioned, domain four, is uh, has the lowest weightage however that does not mean that you will not see questions so we do need to understand how these cost management services and all the other essential concepts will fall and have a relative importance for the domain four set of questions which are basically identify cost effective storage solutions identify cost effective compute and database services and of course to design cost optimized network architectures Next, we have AWS Database Services Overview and we will cover among the services that I've mentioned as important in the exam guide are Amazon Relational Database Service, which is a relational database database type. We have Aurora, which is also a relational database type. Then we also have DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database service, Elastic Cache, which is an in-memory database, and Amazon Redshift, which is a data warehouse. While going through the various AWS database services, we need to understand them with a particular emphasis of how these services would be used in designing resilient architectures, specifically how to design multi-tier architecture solutions, and also how to design high-performing architectures, and how to choose high-performing database solutions for a workload. Also important are various disaster recovery strategies. There are four important disaster recovery strategies, which are backup and restore, pilot light, warm standby, and multi-site active or hot standby active passive strategy. 
We will not go into the exact details in this video. However, we will go into a, a lot more detail in the upcoming videos. Over here, it's presented in summary form of what is important for the exam. Also, we have a lot of AWS management and governance services. These will be important um, for all the four domains and understanding them will be important because the number of services are quite many and each has a different use case. For example, AWS Auto Scaling is to enable builders for speed with built-in governance control service. AWS Backup, which is the use case is centralized operations management. AWS CloudTrail, which helps you to operate environment with speed and governance. CloudWatch, also within that same use case. AWS Config, also has the same use case. Amazon Event Bridge, also known as Amazon CloudWatch Events. This enables builders for speed with built-in governance control service. We have AWS Organizations, which also helps for speed with built-in governance control. Resource Access Manager, AWS Systems Manager and AWS Trust Advisor. These three services fall under the use case of how to operate your environment with speed and governance. It will be important to not only know these various services that these are these these compute services uh, sorry these AWS services are under the management and governance category, but it is also important to recall what is the use case, which will help you in being able to answer questions in the actual exam. Also important are microservices and component decoupling, decoupling services. There are four which are highlighted in the exam guide as important. We have AWS Simple Queue Service, which is which falls under the category of application integration. Now, Simple Queue Service is a fully managed message queuing service. AWS Simple Notification Service. Now, that is a web service that enables. Um, it's a fully massive, fully uh, managed notification service. Amazon Message Queue is a managed message broker service, and AWS Step Functions which makes it easier to co coordinate the components of distributed applications as a series of steps in a visual workflow. Now, these four services will be, we, we need to understand the, these services and how they will help us to answer questions related to domain one, how to design resilient architectures, specifically within 1.3, how to design decoupling, decoupling mechanisms using AWS services. We also have migration and data transfer services that we need to know about. Um, in the exam guide, the important services that are mentioned are AWS Database Migration Service, which falls under the product category of how to migrate your applications. We have AWS Server Migration Service, which is also under the same product category as database migration. We have AWS Migration Hub, which is under the category of assess and mobilize. Then we have AWS DataSync, AWS Snowball, and AWS Transfer Family, which helps to migrate to storage. For these AWS services, which are under migration data transfer, understanding the product category will be critical to help you understand how to answer questions, which will fall for the two domains mentioned over here, domain one, design resilient architectures, basically how to choose appropriate resilient storage. So understanding the product category is very critical. It'll help you to select the data service that will access the requirements of the application and how to identify storage services that can be used with hybrid or non-cloud native applications. Similarly, uh, Domain 3 will cover design secure application architectures and we need to select appropriate data security options. AWS Network and Content Delivery. Now this is of course a very important concept. And within networking and content de delivery, uh, the exam guide mentions these are the important AWS services that we should know about. First is Amazon API Gateway, which falls under the category of application networking. AWS Direct Connect, which falls under the category of hybrid connectivity. AWS Global Accelerator, which is an edge networking product. Amazon CloudFront, which is also an edge networking product. Amazon Route 53 is also within edge networking. AWS Transit Gateway and Amazon VPC 
are basically a, a network foundation product categories. Understanding these services is very essential in order to be able to answer questions related to domain one and domain two, specifically how to design highly available and fault toler tolerance architectures, and within domain two, how to select high performing networking solutions for workload. So as you can see, understanding AWS networking and content delivery services will be very critical to answer questions related to domain one and domain two. AWS security is also an important concept. Um, primarily, it will be the focus of domain three. Now, we have a lot of services which I mentioned over here. Um, what is important is that not only do you understand what the service does, but also what category, what product category or what use case does the security, uh, AWS security service serve. That will help to understand how to answer questions related to designing secure access to AWS resources, how to design secure application tiers, and how to select appropriate data security options. As we can see in the table, AWS Identity and Access Management, popularly known as IAM, is under the product category Identity and Access Management. So is directories, AWS Directory Service and AWS Single Sign-On. We have Amazon Guard Duty and Amazon Inspector, which are under the category of Detection. We have AWS Key Management Service, Amazon Macy, AWS Secret Managers, and AWS Certificate Manager, which are under the category of Data Protection. And of course, the final two services that are listed here is AWS Web Application Firewall, also known as WAF, and AWS Shield, which are primarily focused on infrastructure protection. We also have AWS Serverless Design Principles. This is of course important for the exam. The services mentioned in the exam guide are AWS Lambda, which has a compute use case or product category. Fargate also has a compute product category. Amazon SQS Simple Queue Service, which is a fully ma managed message queuing service, falls under the use case of application integration. Amazon SNS, also known as Simple Notification Service, is a fully managed messaging service, which is also under application integration. Amazon API Gateway also falls under application cat integration category. S3, DynamoDB, Aurora Serverless, these are also other important serverless solutions that will be important to answer questions related to domain one, domain two, and domain four. Finally, we have storage, and the important storage services that are mentioned are AWS Elastic Block Store, which is a block storage storage service type. We have AWS Elastic File System, which is a file storage. Amazon FSx, this is a newly introduced service, and we may see some questions coming related to FSx in the exam. So be sure to put a specific focus on this. And it's also file storage type of service. S3, of course, most people should know is an object storage. S3 Glacier or Glacier serves archival storage and AWS Storage Gateway helps in hybrid on-premises or off-premises storage. The important learning outcomes, um, while well, over here it's a bit limited, but Domain 1 and Domain 2 will have particular emphasis for AWS storage services. We might, may also see certain questions for Domain 3 and Domain 4 coming with respect to AWS storage service use case. So finally, with this, we end the Essential Concepts video. In the next video, we will go over a lot more detail into the essential concepts of compute service. So thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time.